You know, I'm not a hoarder, regardless of what some people say. But as a gadget guy, I have a hard time throwing anything away that's tech related. Like this old satellite dish that was once bolted to the house and served the purpose of snagging TV signals from over 22,000 miles in space, bringing them back down and converting them into high quality TV images. Pretty amazing technology if you think about it. Well, this old dish has seen its day, at least for that purpose. But it's time to bring it out of retirement and put it to work with some cool new alternative uses that I think you're going to like. To make a long-range Wi-Fi cantina, you're going to need a can. In this case, it's a can of baked beans. Since we need the can to be empty, I'll open up the can and get to work eating the beans. I tried to enlist my friend Domino to see if he'd help me out. Not a chance. You don't like baked beans, Domino? No. Okay, the can is empty. I've removed the label and completely cleaned out the inside. Now this can measures three inches in diameter and about five inches in length, which will work for this project. So we're going to take the length and divide it by four and we get 1.25. That'll be the distance from the bottom of the can where we need to make a mark. I'm going to drill one hole to get started, but I'm going to need the hole to be bigger, so I'll use a larger bit and drill it out. Using a pair of snips, I cut some of the rough edges off of that hole, and then using my Dremel and a sanding wheel, I made it nice and smooth. Then I picked up a UHF coax socket that'll mount in the can, and it fits snugly inside the hole. In my garage, I found this length of 12-2 electrical wire, which has copper wire inside. So I'll cut through that insulation and extract a small piece of copper wire about 2 inches in length. And this small piece of wire fits perfectly inside the coax socket. So we'll fire up the soldering station and we're going to solder this piece of copper wire inside the socket. It's been trimmed so this piece of wire reaches just the center of the can when the socket is installed. Now I could have used four screws to hold this socket in place, but I decided that hot glue would be the best alternative and much easier to use. So I ran a bead around that hole and put the socket in place and held it till the glue dried. Okay, our Wi-Fi can is done, and now it's time to get to work on that dish. The first step is to get to the LNB, or the Low Noise Block Down Converter. This is what collects the signal from the dish. I'm going to remove the two screws that hold it in place and remove that LNB. Back out to my garage where I found this old galvanized pipe bracket with metal that bends pretty good, so I'm going to be using this for the bracket. And we'll also need a couple of hose clamps. After bending the bracket in shape, I'm going to place it over the can, and using the hose clamp, I'm going to tighten it down and secure it to the can. And the other smaller hose clamp will hold the other end of the bracket to the existing mount on the dish. Now that all worked out good. It looks pretty cool. The last step is to screw in the coax cable into the socket, and I removed an antenna on my older Wi-Fi router and screwed the pigtail connector into the antenna jack. Then it was just a matter of pointing the long-range Wi-Fi cantina towards a Wi-Fi signal. In this case, it's a free Wi-Fi hotspot offered by a local fast food restaurant. I grabbed that signal from about a half mile away, and I was able to use some free Wi-Fi. Plus, with closer Wi-Fi, you'll get a good 5 to 15 dB gain. There's a good chance you've seen those parabolic mics on the sidelines of football games or other sporting events. Let's make our own. The first step, take apart the LNB. Whoa! Ants! Nasty! They were living inside this LNB. Kind of made me jump. Alright, well, I removed the housing for the LNB and also this little white cap. For this project, I'll be using this standard microphone with a quarter inch jack. I ran the mic cable through the hole in the LNB housing and set the mic in place. Wow, this mic fit perfectly inside the LNB housing. Now to finish this off and make it look right, I used my Dremel with a cutting blade and cut this housing in half. Then I snapped it back in place in the other housing end, and this helped secure the microphone. Then it was just a matter of putting the LNB back on the existing satellite post, and I'm good to go. I took it outside and put on a pair of headphones and slowly started turning my spy mic. When you make your own, you'll be surprised at the long distance sounds you can pull in. I have this little over the air HD antenna as a backup in case my other sources of TV go down. But I gotta be honest, I put it outside and I was only able to grab three HD channels. A little disappointing, but what do you want for 10 bucks? So it's time to turn this into a long range HD TV grabber. Like all of these projects, it will require the removal of the LNB. 
And in this case, we're going to want to mount this antenna facing into the dish so the dish can grab the signals and shoot them into the TV. So for this, I'm using a 3 quarter inch square aluminum tube. It's hollow on the inside, and because it's aluminum, it's perfect for outdoor use. The idea here is to mount the aluminum tube on the satellite post. So for starters, I'm going to drill two holes in the end of the aluminum tube. I match the spacing of the existing holes that are in that post. Now it's time to look for some screws, so I brought out one of my containers, couldn't find anything, grabbed another container, and finally found two perfect sheet metal screws to mount the tube. Okay, I've screwed in the tube and it's good to go. Next, I ran the wiring coming from the antenna down through the center of the tube and removed one of the small screws in the existing antenna bracket, drilled out a hole and found another longer screw and mounted the antenna to my new aluminum extension tube. Okay, my long range HD TV grabber is ready. Time to bring it outside and with trial and error, I aimed it towards my local TV stations. Now check this out, scanning for local antenna channels, I didn't find three channels, I ended up finding 40 digital channels with my new long range HD TV grabber. And the picture quality is amazing. This old satellite dish has been out of use for quite a period of time and the paint has gotten all chalky and comes off when you rub it. So for this next project, it's got to be cleaned. I took it outside and hosed it down real well and then a brush with some soap and I got all of that chalky paint off. I have a roll of silver air conditioning duct tape that has a mylar finish and is very shiny. I began by applying strips of this silver tape to the dish. I continued along until the dish was completely covered in this silver tape and I kind of smoothed out any bubbles. It's very reflective, even with the lighting I have here in my room. I'll be using the same pipe bracket I used for the Wi-Fi project earlier. This time I straightened it out and secured it to the aluminum tube with a bolt and nut and lock washer. And I'll be using a small white chain I grabbed from my parts bin. Using a coat hanger, I made a rounded bracket to fit around this old pot and I attached the chain to it. I hung it from the aluminum tube and then took it outside in this bright Florida sun. I lined it up so the beam from the sun was aimed directly at the bottom of the pot. To test out the satellite solar cooker, I put some butter in and then cracked an egg into the pot. After a few minutes, the egg was starting to cook. A few minutes later, cooked some more, and in a few more minutes, this egg was cooked. One egg cooked from the free energy of the sun. Hey, not bad. Hmm, a side of baked beans would go great about now. The satellite solar cooker would be great for camping or just surviving without power. In fact, 